This video addresses the fifth grade math standard of finding volume using unit cubes. In this video, we will address three things. One, unit measurements in unit cubes. Basically, a unit cube is a cube with a side length of one, and that one can be any measurement, feet, inches, yards, or centimeters. The next two parts address pitfalls students often have when they're trying to count the cubes. So second, we'll talk about hidden cubes. These are cubes that are either obstructed or totally hidden from view when students are asked to count them. And three, changing the side lengths of cubes so they're no longer unit cubes. Unit cubes. Volume could be defined as how many unit cubes it takes to fill up a space. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six cubes. So the volume I have here is six cubic units. Now, when we say units, we mean one. That one can be any measurement, but in order for it to be unit, it has to say one. For example, it could be inches, centimeters, or feet, or many others. What's important is that whenever you're talking about volume, unless you're using a measurement specific to volume, like liters or gallons, you need to have the exponent three. That implies it's cubic inches, cubic centimeters, or cubic feet. A way to remember this is that we're talking about a three-dimensional measurement. We are measuring the inside of a space. So, three-dimensional measurement, you put a three up there. Okay, students may be asked what the volume is of this figure. In which case, because it's not a regular shape like a rectangle or a square, uh, you need to count the cubes. So, when you count the cubes, you can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Well, this is incorrect because there are actually cubes that you cannot see. For example, if you look at this cube here and this cube back here, there needs to be cubes underneath them. Otherwise, they would fall down. So as you can see, we have this cube right here, but how tall is it? Well, let's compare it to the ones beside it. It's on this same level, so that's one, two, three. So that stack is three high. And this stack is one too high. So there are hidden cubes that you cannot see. One strategy I have students use is I have them count the stacks. And what I mean is, this is a stack, this is a stack, this is a stack, and so on. So when you're counting the stacks, this stack has one, two, three, four cubes in it. I have four here and four here. That gives me eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then this one is three tall, so it's 16, 17, 18. So it's 18 cubic units. Okay, so here's the same shape as we had before. And so we know that there's 18 cubic units. And in this example, each side length is worth one. One unit here, one unit here, one unit here. But what would happen if we were to multiply the side lengths by two? So instead, we would have two units here, two units here, and two units here. Well, this is a pitfall where many students would say, well, just multiply the volume by two. 18 times two is 36. So the answer must be 36 cubic units. But this is incorrect. First, I'm going to tell you why it's incorrect, and then I'm going to show you how to figure out the right answer. This is incorrect because you're not just changing one side length by two, you're actually multiplying the height by two, the length by two, and the width by two. So you're actually multiplying the volume by two three times. So what I have my students do is I have them find the volume of one of the cubes. So this cube right here is two by two by two, or eight cubic units. And then I multiply it by how many cubes I have. Well, luckily I've already counted, so I have 18. So I multiply 18 times eight cubic units. 64, eight times one is eight, so it's 144. So the actual volume, when I changed my side lengths, is 144 cubic units. Let's do another example. What if instead I multiply my side lengths by three? So the length was three, the width was three, and the height was three. 
Well, then the volume of my individual cube would be 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27 cubic units. So then I go back and say, well, there's 18 of them, so it's 18 times 27. So the volume of this entire figure is 486 cubic units. Okay, but what if they change each side length by a different amount? I know this is a cube, so all side lengths are equal. But for this example, let's pretend that it's just a regular old rectangular prism, where my length is two units, my width is five units, and my height is 10 units. What do we do now? Well, the same principle applies we find the volume of this individual rectangular prism and then multiply it by how many I have. 10 times 2 is 20, 20 times 5 is 100. So each rectangular prism is worth 100 cubic units. So I multiply that by my 18 rectangular prisms and I end up with 1,800 cubic units. Okay, let's go ahead and recap. One. When you're measuring volume, unless you're using a volume-specific measurement, you need to represent it as cubic units. For example, cubic inches, cubic centimeters, or cubic feet. Basically, any cubic length. Make sure that you use a 3 as the exponent for volume. 2. Hidden cubes. Remember, when you're counting the cubes to find volume, some cubes might not be shown. So look out for cubes that are partially obstructed or hidden completely. Remember my recommendation, just count the figure in stacks or columns to figure out how many cubes there are. And lastly, changing side lengths. If the side length isn't equal to one, it's not a unit cube. So you can't just count the cubes. Instead, find out what the volume of one of the rectangular prisms or cubes is, and then multiply it by the number of cubes. That will give you the figure's total volume.